Hi, we're gonna talk about the JVC camera today. It comes in this bag and we usually use this tripod. The main pocket of the bag is where the camera is. It's easy to lose the foam cover and the eye cup. So make sure those get stay with the camera and don't fall off. We also keep a pair of headphones in here and the charger is in the zipper bag. The tripod uh, has three legs and they can be extended to whatever height you need. And then the legs pull out. The screw on the left side of the tripod is kind of a lock that locks it in place, so loosen that. The screw on the right side is a tension adjustment. If you loosen it, it'll be easier to move up and down. The tension adjustment for the rotation is actually inside here. You can turn this, this little screw to adjust that. And then this will lock the rotation, this, if you pull that all the way out. The camera has a plate on the bottom that is screwed on with this screw. It has to slide in from the back. And then you can adjust it forward or backwards. And then when you have it where you want it, turn this screw that's on the right side and that will lock it in place. So on the back of the tripod, there is a level. So you can adjust the leg length until that bubble is in the center of the circle. Mm -hmm. The back of the camera also has several connections that you'll need here. So the remote control on the handle of the tripod plugs in with this cable to this remote port here on the back of the camera. Also, the power connection is right below that. The power adapter from the zipper pocket on the bag plugs in there. And the battery on the back can be re removed by pushing this button. Just make sure that's in the camera. And the SD cards go here. So I've got two SD cards in. They just go in these two slots on the back. One more thing on the back of the camera is the video output connections. Behind this little door is the HDMI port and behind this little cover is an SDI port. So that'll get your video and audio out. Um, this power switch is on the side here. Just push that in and slide it up. Um, make sure the screen is open and then make sure the lens is open with this switch here. That'll open the lens. One thing you might notice is that we are almost full on our SD cards. We have 14 minutes left on one and four on the other. To clear those out, you need to reformat them by pushing the menu button, going to system, and then media, and format media. You can format both slots. That'll clear off everything that's on them. So the camera has two audio inputs here on the right side. They're both XLR, input one and input two. The camera can record two channels of audio. So we have this mic mounted to the top here. It is normally plugged into input one. There's also um, a mic on the front that's built into the camera but it's not as good as the one that we have mounted to the top here. The first switch here lets you select what input goes to each channel of audio on the recording. So right now input one is going to both channels one and two on the recording. So this mic is going to both channels. If we had something plugged into the other XLR port, we would switch this to input two then input one would go to channel one and input two would go to channel two. 
there is an internal microphone that I was talking about on the front uh, that can be used here, but that picks up like the zoom noises of the lens and other like just camera noises. So the camera can send phantom power like I said earlier. The microphone needs phantom power, but we need to tell it that input one that this mic is plugged into needs 48 volt phantom power. The monitor section controls what's sent to the headphones, which can be plugged in here behind this little flap, the one with the headphones icon. You can monitor what's being recorded to channel one or channel two or both. And then you can adjust what you're hearing through these volume buttons. We have the microphone levels on automatic right now. You could put them on manual and manually adjust the level of the audio that's coming in with these dials, but automatic seems to work pretty well. You can see the meters from the microphone right here. When I speak, you can see them move. And if we didn't have the phantom power that we needed, let's say we had this switch in the wrong place, then we won't get levels on that meter. But let's turn it back on. And now with the phantom power, the microphone is working. So this camera has autofocus, which works pretty well. So we use that most of the time. Um, that's this focus switch here. We can switch from manual focus to autofocus. If we're in manual focus, this front ring adjusts the focus. You can see the image getting out of focus there. And, but we, but autofocus works pretty well. So we'll use autofocus. The white balance is how warm or cool the image feels. If full auto is on, then it will try to automatically adjust the white balance. But if, it, if it's not doing it quite right, you can turn off auto white balance. And then this be a preset switch will let you pick between a cooler color, a warmer color, or you can, you can adjust it by holding a piece of white paper in front of the lens and then holding this flower button that will adjust the white balance to the room. Another important part of using the camera is the exposure. So if you're in a room that's really bright, you might need to turn the exposure down. If it's too dim, you can turn up the exposure. You can see I'm doing that with the last ring here around the lens. That's the exposure adjustment. And down here though, we have gain. So if you've got it all the way bright and you just need a little more, the gain, we're on low right now, which is the L. If we move it to M, then we'll get a little more gain. You can see in the image and high even more. The more gain you have, the more digital noise you'll have in dark spaces but sometimes you need that if there's just not enough light. If the full auto switch is on, this wheel won't work. So make sure that full auto is off if you want to adjust exposure. To help you know if you have the correct exposure, there's something called zebra stripes. They kind of look weird at first. They're these moving lines along this part. If it's improperly exposed, those moving lines will go away. They show up on parts of the image that are properly exposed. So the most important things in a shot, you'll want to be properly exposed, like people's faces. If the background's a little too bright, that's okay. The camera has several ways to zoom. Uh, one being this toggle here on the right side. There's also one here on the top next to the record button. And then there's one on the remote that's mounted to the handle. This also has a record button. We have another kind of these. It has a few more buttons and a rocker style zoom. 
This has a f-stop adjustment on it for the exposure control as well. So you can adjust the exposure with this kind of remote. 